I am very pleased to welcome special guest Marcella Detroit to Cove FM and to Sam's Musical Mystery Tour. Congratulations on your upcoming release, The Vehicle, which will be hitting the shelves tomorrow. Her new album is available on iTunes. Marcy, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Now, okay, The Vehicle. So you have an autobiography coming out uh, with that title as well. Is that true? Yes. Uh, I've been working on it, believe it or not, for a few years. And um, it will be out, you know, following the album. But yeah, it's called The Vehicle as well. As in music is the vehicle. It's taken me all around the world. You know, it's been the vehicle of my life. It's been an amazing journey. So I just thought I need to put this down in words. Somebody suggested it to me and I thought, God, I wish I would have done a journal, you know, back in the day. But who knew, you know, who knew that I'd be doing, you know, everything that I've done. But, you know, my memory is is pretty good. And yeah, so I'm working on it. It's about 95 percent done. Okay, right on. When you think about it, I guess, yeah, music is in a way a vehicle. Actually, I mean, I'll, to be more literal, I listen to music all the time when I'm in my car, and I, and I sing to it, and um, I've sung, <laughs> I, I've sung Shakespeare's sister's songs, and um, for example, uh, I, I've, I've tried reaching that pitch in uh, your history, and I, I can't do it. <laughs> I. Uh, your history. I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I tried, but I'm actually like, I'm, I'm actually more than an octave too low. I didn't, cause I can reach pretty high. Yeah. Even though it doesn't sound that well, but <laughs> anyway. Well, yeah, for a man, that's pretty high. Yeah. <laughs> Not many men could probably pull that off. Yeah. So don't feel like you're, you know, too alone in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe young Brian Wilson, perhaps. Cause I mean, when he was young, he had a pretty high voice. Oh, really? Oh yeah, when 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 the Beach Boys, um... Brian Wilson. Yeah, maybe, maybe. But that's you know kind of. I don't know if, if he would have been able to hit that. Maybe on a good day. Who knows? Maybe. We have to ask him. Yeah, have to have to ask him. Yeah. This is my first interview. Did you know that? Assuming not, <laughs> you could probably tell, right? I'm I'm like Chris Farley from Saturday Night Live. He's like, do you, you you remember when you were with Shakespeare's sister? You know. You, I don't know if you're familiar with Saturday Night Live or Chris Farley, but oh sure, yeah, yeah. Anyways, he does these like really awkward interviews and stuff like that. <laughs> and yeah, the whole week, I, the whole week, I was making fun of myself. Yeah. You know. Okay, so I was reading about your new album, and it says it only took 14 days to produce, so two weeks. Now, tell me about the sessions for the album. Well, how that happened was I was working with somebody else on another album, and. We did like five songs and then they said, oh, I need to take a break for six months. And I was, oh, are you kidding me? Six months. So I thought, well, I can't wait for that. You know, I, I have so many, I have so many songs and I could do another whole album. I didn't, I was hoping that it would only take a few weeks. You know, I wanted to do it like they did it in the old days. Yeah. So I got together all my, my friends, my musician friends and, um, my publishers, they're called Music Sales Corporation, G. Shermer. And um, I told them, look, this guy's taking a break. I need to keep going here. I could do a whole album of other songs. Actually, only one song overlaps from my album to the other album I was working on. And, you know, I was going to just pay for it myself, do it myself. And they said, no, give me a budget. <laughs> and so the next thing I knew, you know, they were funding this other project of mine. And um, I handpicked all the musicians, who, people that I had worked with before. And we went in the studio and, you know, put down all the, the songs in like two days, all the tracks. That's like, you know, 12 songs. And um, and then I did all the overdubs. Being a producer was, you know, it's it's a challenge because you really have to detach a little bit. You, you can, right. you know, em get emotional about stuff, but you really have to detach and plan things out especially the way I was doing it. I wanted to do it like the old days, like I said, where you just go in and do it. You don't really think too much about it, except you have everything all mapped out and planned. Right, right. So that's what I did. And then 14 days later, we, you know, we had it all mixed and mastered, and, and there it was. And I was, you know, that's, that's how it happened, just like the old days. You know, we started off, I wanted to put it on tape, because I miss, I really miss to, in today's music, the warmth, you know, yes. everything's just sounds really sterile and it almost hurts my ears. I, I, um, I can agree with that. And yeah, so I just wanted to do it, you know, old school. And 
you know, 16 days later, I've got a complete record. So I was thrilled, <laughs> you know, absolutely thrilled. Wow. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. There is a difference with the sound. And actually, I, I think of when you mentioned that, I think of vinyl, right? And, and when I, cause I collect vinyl, believe me, I, I, I have 90 records in my collection and, and older people right. look at me and they're like, what? Anyway. Oh yeah. Vinyls. That's, you know, those are the days where, you know, you had that warmth and you had that, you had space mm. right now. Everybody's just trying to fill up every little space with, bip, 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 you know, mm -mm. all kinds of noises. It just drives me nuts. Yeah. It, it somehow has kind of a thin sound to it. Almost. Um, yeah. Not 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 just thin, but um, abrasive. Abra yeah, <laughs> that's one of the ones. Now that you mention it, and uh, artificial. Yes, that's the word I'm looking yeah. for. It has an artificial yeah. kind of feel and stuff like that. Right, artificial is a good word. Yeah, I wanted to keep it real. That's why I have real people. Yes, yes. On my record, interacting with each other, creating a magic. Yes. <laughs> Hopefully, you well, know. And it's when when an album's recorded like in a, a short period of time, you could feel kind of like the raw energy, you know. And I could sort of sense that with this album. I've given it a, a few listens, and I, I really dig it. I really dig it, man. <laughs> the next question was gonna was about the songwriting process. Uh, the question was, did the songs come quickly to mind, then to paper, or was it more of a sporadic process? As far as the song, well, um, I had written the songs already, you know. Yeah. So that was the easy part. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, but if you're asking about my songwriting process, um, is that what you want to know about? The, so, did the songwriting, did that take a while or did the songs just sort of come quickly? Oh, basically? oh did, this, did it take a while for me to write all the songs? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have been collecting the songs. Some of them were, were newer. Some of them, you know, I had around for a few years. You know, but I knew they were all really cohesive and I and I knew that they would work as a, you know, as a group, as a collection, you know. And um, yeah, so it just it all made sense. You know, they were they were already written and ready to be delivered. You know, I, I love to write. That's one of my favorite things, writing and being creative. I, I don't know what I would do if I didn't do that. I'd probably be, you know, a danger to society. <laughs> Something. <laughs> But yeah, they were all done and they were all inspired. All my songs are are about my life. They're about they're autobiographical. I don't write about I don't write about, you know, things that I don't know about anymore. Hmm. It doesn't make sense to me. Got to be true to yourself, you know. Got to got to stay real, you know. By the way, I like that you revisited the the classic uh hit uh, Stay. Um so what inspired you to revisit it for this uh, for this record? Well, actually, that was um, the other project that I was working on, um, produced by this guy named Larry Klein, who is, you know, he has um, done a lot of amazing things. He, he used to work with jo Joni Mitchell. He was married to her for 12 years, and he's done a few, like, Grammy Award-winning records. And, and we thought we would try to, you know, revisit that. And then it just seemed to make sense to put it as a bonus track on this album. Yeah, you because know, it's it's very different. I'm I'm sure you've heard from the original version. It's a lot more. Yeah. It's a lot more. The quality is it, it it draws you in more. You know, it's not as much of a barrage. It's more of a intimate version. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did I did get that vibe when I when I heard that. I I like that. Um, by the way. Um, oh, cool! Thank you. <laughs> So what is your favorite song from the new album? Uh, like, is there like a song that you're like the most proud of or is it kind of like all just as a collective, you're proud of them all equally kind of thing? You know, I, I really love them all. The first single, Good Girl Down, I really love. And there are a few others. Uh, I love The Vehicle, which is the title of the album. Yeah. Um, which kind of talks about my joy of, of music and my life in it. And um, then I love Practice What I Preach because it's kind of me poking fun at myself, you know, because I've had over the years lots of, you know, people, friends and fans, you know, coming to me with problems or, you know, issues that they wanted my opinion on. So I'm, I feel like, you know, I'm always trying to help everybody else, but sometimes I, I think, God, if I only listened to, you know, to my songs and the messages in my songs, I'd probably be a lot happier, mm. you know, so... That one I love. Look no further. I, I, you know, it's hard to say whether there's one that is my favorite because I really love a lot of them. Yeah, 
I've already gained a few favorite songs actually. Um I, I do like the, the the single Good Girl Down. I like um I like the title track as well. I also like the key. That's a really grooving number. <laughs> yeah. People seem to like that one. That's great. It's all about uh well, I guess it's open to interpretation what it's about. But it's really about communication. Mm. You know. Everybody's got the uh the access to it, but a lot of us don't choose to use it. So it's it came out of frustration, I think. Oh. And the joy of communicating. I really like to communicate. But that, that's good because I'm not good at it. <laughs> well. Good at that? Yes, you are. Well, sometimes. <laughs> See, so it's it's interesting when sometimes I'm on the radio. I, I'm really comfortable. Some days I, I'm I'm at the weird age of 21 where it's kind of like. I'm an adult, but I don't feel like an adult. And it's kind of, it's just, it's strange. Anyways, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> okay. I understand. I have a son who's, who's 22. So yeah. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. It's, it's a kind of an awkward time. I think you're doing really well. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I just guessed that you were 20, only 21. Oh, really? <laughs> How old did you think I was? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show. No, I'm good. When embarking on solo projects, what would you say is more difficult, the songwriting or coming up with like the structure like for the instrumental backing? I know some people have different methods, like my method, for example, is that I'll uh, write the song first and then I would come up with like the melody kind of thing. What do you do first? Do you, do you come up with the melody and chord structure and all that matters stuff first and then the songwriting? Um, no, you... my songwriting process has changed a lot over the years. I developed... You know, we all have our own formulas, things that work for us. And when I say formula, that's not to say, oh, it's like, you know, like a boring formula or a pattern that, that's not inspired. Everything I do comes from, it all comes from inspiration. And what I like to do is I start with a title, you know, something that I really feel strongly about. And that could be something that somebody says, something that I see on TV, you know, like a hook line, you know, like a really strong title, something that I feel inspired by and that I know I'm going to be able to draw a lot, a lot of inspiration from. Right. Um, so I start with that. I used to just kind of start, oh, I'll just start anyway. Oh, I've got an idea for a chord. Ugh. And I just paint myself into a corner when it came time to, okay, now here's the chorus and what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't know, how, I wouldn't know where to go. So I really start with the chorus, basically. I start with something that's really strong, and I map that out. A title, and usually a title, to me, like I said, sparks in, in, uh, inspiration and information. And it also has a rhythm, like a cadence to it. And that inspires a melody pretty much immediately, you know. And I just kind of go from there. You know, I just kind of feed myself that title and build around it. I, I sort out the chorus first so I know, okay, I've got that. <laughs> and now I figure out and I just try to let myself relax and, and become really inspired to figure out what the verse should be. You know, and I write down everything that I want to talk about. And then I have to, you know, formulate it into a rhyme, you know, poetry, because really songs are poetry. Yep. You know, sometimes I've started with writing a poem like The Art of Melancholy for my Jewel album. That was a poem. Right. That, yeah, that I just kind of, and I kind of wrote part of it. I wrote the first verse, and I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to keep writing it. And um, and then I came back to it a few weeks later and wrote the rest of it. But but really though, now and I knew what I, I knew the title was going to be the Art of Melancholy, but but now I it's it's mostly about you know having a really strong title with inspiration and information that I can draw from. And that's how I start. Then I map out the rest. I do a demo, you know, at home. I have, I'm in my own little studio right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I do a demo and usually kind of use my demos as my guide because there are sometimes my demos, people have said to me, your demos are so magical, you know, you should just remix those. And, you know, and in fact, the B side for uh, Good Girl Down is one of my little demos that I did at home and the record company, the label loved it and mastered it and used it so it doesn't feel like a demo <laughs> at all uh, well, yeah yeah when, when it's, I, heard it. I like i love to have fun and you know work on stuff in my own studio and sometimes i just program everything myself once in a while i have people come in you know and and play for me you know things that i i wouldn't be able to do as well but 
that's how I do it. Well, I, from what you've told me, I, I like that method actually. Mm. It's, I, I think it's a, yeah, it's a good idea. Come to it works it. for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I like that. So next thing I want to cover, I'm now going to go do a run through of your solo discography. Cause see, I'm anal retentive. I like to go like in chronological order of things kind of thing. When I mention an album, I, I want you to tell me like the first thoughts that come to mind when you think of that particular record, your first uh, solo album, Marcella, for example. Right. The first thought. Oh, <laughs> well, God, there's so many things. <laughs> yeah. It does seem kind of vague, doesn't it? <laughs> no, um, I'm just trying to think. It was a difficult time. I had the West Coast label, Epic Records, really loved it, but the, the East Coast didn't get it at all, you know. So it's the old story of, oh, you get signed, you know, by a label who, you know, part of them love it and part of them don't. So guess what happens? Nothing. Oh. And the president left the company right after I signed. They got a new guy in and it was just kind of, you know, I just didn't have the, the support of the label. So it was very frustrating, that whole experience. Yeah. It, I mean, very, very difficult. I've never done it, but I, I can imagine it would be very difficult to to please everybody, I guess. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess obviously um, the next one we go to would be Jewel, I guess. Jewel. <laughs> yeah. You know, when I was doing, the, um, when we were doing the Hormonally Yours tour, you know, with Shakespeare's sister, I was always going to do a, my own record next because my ex-partner, Siobhan, wanted to take a break, be with her family and whatnot. And so I had been writing, you know, I'd been storing up songs and writing, and then it came time to do my album. And it was really exciting for me you know it was a time to to discover who I was you know as an artist because up to that point I had devoted all my time and energy into Shakespeare's sister and yeah. everything else that I had done and so now it was my turn you know my turn to do what I wanted to do and the record the label London Records enlisted you know an amazing producer Chris Thomas so yeah it was it was a fun really fun experience i really think some of those songs on there like art of melancholy and james brown are two of the favorite songs of mine that i've ever written i believe as well i should say because i think that was a, a pretty good pretty big success yes um, for me i i love the song so yeah proud of that i'm proud of the you know some of the songs on there i really love yeah i really like the single i believe and i'm no angel <laughs> as well both really solid singles i haven't actually had a chance to hear the whole album and i want to um, oh, cool. <laughs> from what I have heard, I, I really, really like, and it, it seems like a lot of stuff has been going down and creative juices going, you know, all that yeah. stuff. Okay. So next album, Feeler, 1996, mm. when I was five. <laughs> wow. I can't believe it's that long ago, but you know, I've played that recently and it still holds up, you know, uh, Ooh, that was experimental. That record, it was, it was pretty rock and roll, a combination of rock and roll alternative with a little bit electronic as well. But that was London records saying, um, you know, we don't get the record. So you're on your own. And they, the label dropped me. Oh, poor me. But it was a great, um, uh, you know, it was a great experience because my manager at the time, was able to get me deals all over the world. So I did a lot of traveling and it was quite successful in Japan, which was great. Yeah, I seen through from watching the YouTube video on your on your channel about that, that it did well there, interestingly. Yeah. Um, one song I really love from that album is the song I Hate You Now. And the reason why, it's it's so neat. And I, I love it because it has kind of like a psychedelic tone to it in a way. Oh. <laughs> and well that's the vibe i get from it anyways but i uh i love it and the thing about that for the longest time i've always loved psychedelic pop and psychedelic rock from the 60s you know late 60s early 70s along with yeah. progressive rock and all that matter stuff so it really connects to uh all that uh let's see ab fab songs uh, uh -huh. from 1999 so that was when you were involved on the show absolutely fabulous for the episode the last shout yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, that um, that came about through. I was doing a show in London at this place called Dingwalls, and Jennifer Saunders came to the show. That was a few years before the actual Ab Fab happened. Mm -hmm. 
but she came to the show and then I got a fax from her the next day and um, she asked me if I wanted to be involved in, in you know, AFAM. And at first it was just for, she just wanted me to write a few songs for it. But then after I wrote the songs, she said, would you like to be in it? Oh. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay, you know. What could be so bad about playing an angel to, you know, uh, Marianne Faithful's God? I, 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 it was the most amazing time. You know, it was such an incredible experience. And Jennifer is just so naturally funny. You know, mm. we, we would hang out. She invited me over. We'd go out to lunch and stuff. And she's just hysterical, you know. So, yeah, that was that was a great time. It was really fantastic. And that's a really good show, too. <laughs> I always love when they did their parodies of, you know, different groups and stuff like that, you know, like Lana Nini, New New, right? And when they when they parodied Shakespeare's sister, that was fun Oh too. God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was so it was so funny. <laughs> My ex partner didn't like it very much, but I thought it was hysterical. Yeah. The whole thing. You know, how they made me out to be this uh, <laughs> You know, like going along and nothing, you know, not, you know, unaware of everything around me. And then when she comes in, and it's so funny because the first time I met Dawn French, this is the first word she said to me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about the parody. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's the biggest compliment, you know, when you're, you know, when you're used in, a, you know, comedians act as, you know, something that's, you know, really going on right now is like, the, you know, going on in the time, you know, it's, it's a great compliment. So sometimes you just have to have a sense of humor. Oh yeah, you gotta laugh at yourself. Yeah, you gotta kidding. laugh at your. If you can't laugh at yourself, you know, I, I, I'm pretty serious. I'm looking at a title of one of my songs. I'm looking at it. It's on my album, and it's also on my desktop right now. Serious. Sometimes I'm really serious, and my husband has to remind me. You know, are you taking things a little bit too seriously? But I'm. I think I'm finally learning. You know, it's good to have a little bit of a sense of humor. Yeah. So uh, the next question here. What are some of your plans for the future? You have another album coming out soon called The Skin I'm In, I believe it's called. That's kind of on hold right now. We're working with the vehicle. So, you know, see, the original plan was, as I'd said, we I was doing one album with Larry Klein, the, who produced Stay, and he had to take a break for six months. And so in that little time frame, I did my record. But originally... You know, because my publishers funded both albums, we were just going to self-release, you know, do an independent release, which I've done before. And and it's difficult. You know, I'm not saying it can't be done, but it's difficult it's, if you, you know, because you, you have to put on a lot of hats. You have to get people to market it, promote it. It costs a lot of money. You know, labels are, are around for a reason sometimes you know sometimes they're good and sometimes they're not so good I've, I've had it both ways but we were just going to release everything independently and then this label through a friend came along called right recordings who are distributed by universal so they heard the vehicle first and love it and we'll see what happens with skin on them you know it's it's a really good record too but you know we'll see what happens we'll see if that'll come out later or if at all we'll see Oh, okay. So uh, what artists do you hope to collaborate with in, in the future? So. As far as uh, what, doing a record with or, re or recording or, or writing with or gigging with? All of the above. <laughs> hmm. You know, I don't really, I, I'm not really focused on that so much right now. I'm really focused on myself, you know, and doing what I want to do yeah. finally. But, you know, there are some people that I still, that I really respect and admire, like Stevie Wonder, if I ever had the chance to do something with him, I would love that. I did meet him once and, and sang at a club with him when he was performing uh, in London. That was amazing. But it would probably be, you know, old school kind of stuff. But there are some young, you know, modern bands that I really like, like, um, uh, Mumford and Sons, I really like them. They are really good. Yeah, I really like them. Kind of I really like Adele. I'm really sad that Amy Winehouse is no longer with us because she was incredible. Yeah. Let's see, who else do I like? You know, no one else really comes to mind. Oh, Bruno Mars, you know, he's very pop. People might say, oh, he's really pop and whatever, but I really think he's he's good. He's incredibly talented. What a great voice. Yeah. His songs have a lot of depth, you know, more depth 
in the pop world than than you normally get. He, you know, he he plays with it a little bit, and and uh, I think he's really good. But you know, those are the people I I respect, and, and you know, as far as my con- contemporaries go. And I I love Beck. Yes. I like CeeLo Green. Yeah, I like I like soulful stuff mainly. You know, I like funky, soulful. That's my favorite thing. I like Ray LaMontagne. People like that. Right, right on. And so the next record we get to, uh, Dancing Madly Sideways from 2001. Oh, very electronic. That was a completely crazy journey. A lot of those songs, including that the title song I'd written with this guy, and he, you know, we, we wrote the songs really quickly. Came over to LA and we wrote them really quickly. And uh, then he took them back home and did these really bizarre mixes on them that just didn't really translate. So I had all these incredible songs and some friends of mine put me together with this producer, this this girl named Paula Jones. And we worked on that album for a year and it was, she produced it. It was very electronic. And, you know, I've always tried to keep an open mind. Mm-hmm. I like to try different things. And I think if you don't, you're, you're going to get stuck in a rut. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, I, I it, it ended up being a little bit too electronic for me. You know, it lost a little bit of of the magic, but but I think for what it was, I think she did a great job, yeah. you know, producing it. It's very neat. Like my, my favorite song is Closer. Closer, yeah, I like Closer. Well, that's a little that's a little bit more real than than the other tracks. I think maybe that's why you like it. The next, well, the next project I guess this takes us to, and this is a complete <laughs> switch, but a welcome one I guess. The upside of being down. I guess as the Marcy Levy band that was released under. Yeah, well, I did that because, you know, I did Dancing Madly Sideways and it, it was a little bit too electronic for me directionally. I wasn't sure about it. And then I just felt like everything I was doing was very contrived, you know. It just did not feel organic and real to me anymore. So I just thought, I'm going to get back to my roots, you know. I used to sing with Eric Clapton. I grew up singing folk. As most every artist has their moments of doubt. Is there a recurring motto in mind that keeps the spirit alive? Is there a thought that drives the pessimism away and keeps in the optimism? I'm just, I think I'm just naturally optimistic. You know, it's easy to go down and spiral down. But, you know, when I get so far down, there's just something in me that kind of makes me, you know, feel grateful. You know, I always try to remind myself to be grateful because it's a pretty wonderful life that I have. And to be able to do what I love to do is like not so bad. I think we, I didn't really believe this before, but I really believe that we can control what we think. We can choose to go down a negative path or we can choose to be positive and appreciate what we have in our life and be grateful for it yeah i'm yeah i'm I'm thankful for everything thankful that i'm having a chance to talk to you right now you know for example you know means a lot you know thank you i'm grateful for it as well that i'm able to you know talk about what is important to me yeah it's nice to hear your opinions and stuff like that and you know and and your experiences and all that matter stuff okay uh do you remember your very first gig if so, where was this and when was this? Uh, well, it depends on if you mean professionally or just like in school. If you mean professionally, yeah, I remember it well. I was rehearsing with this guy in Ann Arbor, which is about 45 minutes, a college town, 45 minutes from Detroit. And we were doing kind of like bluesy, folky stuff. And uh, he was playing the guitar and it, it was coming around, you know, to the, you know, he was doing the intro and it came around to the verse where I was supposed to sing. And I was so nervous because it was my first like real gig, you know, we were in this coffee house, this really funky coffee house, and it was packed. And he came around to where the verse was supposed to start, and I went to sing, and I went, and nothing came out. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we went around, you know, the intro again a few times, and finally my voice worked. I just choked. Oh, so that man. was my first experience. Oh, gosh, the stage fright. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. <laughs> this so, Okay, so this here is a numbers question. Um, if you can recall... What was the largest crowd you've performed to? Uh, about 120,000 people on tour with Eric when we were doing a tour in Europe. And Bob Dylan and Led Zeppelin were on the, the tour as well. And we were in Germany and all over the all over Europe performing to huge audiences. You know, it was about 120,000 people there. Wow. Which is surreal at that point. It would be, yeah. Um, what about the smallest crowd? <laughs> uh, well, I performed to a few people in my living room. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. 
do you have any cover songs in mind that you would like to do at some point in the future? Um, uh, yeah, you know, um, I'm sure I will. I like the certain songs that I love, some Motown songs, some old soul song that I do, you know, sometimes with like this blues group that I'm with. There's a song by the Isley Brothers called Harvest for the World, which I've done, which I, I'm thinking about redoing. But yeah, we'll see. Oh. Huh. What was it like seeing the Beatles live? <laughs> oh my God, that was, well, for one, it was frustrating because all the, the girls are screaming so loud. It just sounded like, ah! and I could barely hear them the Beatles you know and all I was doing was sitting in my chair I was 12 years old I was just sitting in my chair thinking shut up yeah I just want to hear them oh it was amazing you know it was really amazing my my parents let me and my my friend go down there downtown Detroit in a not great area in this really cool place called Masonic Temple and they were just they I still remember what they looked like wearing these pink shirts and gray kind of Nehru colored um suits and and their hair was all, you know, long and rebellious. And yeah. I mean, I just, I was in love, you know, totally in love. As, as most people I was were, just yeah. frustrated because I couldn't really hear them. To me, that was the point. It was about the music, not about the, you know, the screaming girls. Yeah. I didn't like that. Yeah. No, I, that would be a total drag for sure. Okay. One thing I was going to mention, it was kind of like a joke, and actually I meant to say this during when we were talking about Shakespeare's sister. I, I was going to say, uh, when Hormonally Yours came out, I I, um, I I noticed people were dancing to it, but I couldn't dance to it. Um, I could crawl to it, though, because <laughs> I was one <laughs> one years old, right? That's about right. Yeah. Weird. I'm I'm that young. That, yeah. That's, oh, gosh. Because, I mean, all my, all, my, all my favorite music is at least that year or before that. <laughs> that's good. Um, it has been a pleasure talking to you here on Sam's Musical Mystery Tour on Cove FM. Once again, congratulations on your new album, The Vehicle, which will be in stores tomorrow, folks. So check it out. I have given it many listens already, and I am digging this. Thank you so much, Marcy, for coming on the show. And uh, um, please perform the Maritime someday, uh, if you think about it. <laughs> Great. If Thank you... you so much. I really appreciate talking to you, and I appreciate your your interest and that you like the record. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. Take care. Yes. Well. Yes. Take care. Bye for now. All right. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.